Let's go back through. So here's some other ones. Um, this, is our, uh, this is our hometown paper at the top. Thanks to the rising price of natural gas and the summer heat, electric bills for Louisiana residents and businesses are expected are set to shoot up drastically. So, so Mr. Chairman, natural gas prices, as I recall, and I apologize, don't remember the latest number, uh, but I believe they've gone up about 300% since President Biden took office. 300%. The majority of our electricity comes from natural gas-fired power plants, and so therefore, uh, you, you're gonna see a little bit of a lag in electricity prices because most often you have long-term contracts on natural gas. But as these contracts are renewed and the new prices are locked in, you are gonna see skyrocketing electricity prices. So, so ladies and gentlemen, it is not limited, it is not limited to just gasoline and diesel. It, it, it is gonna be electricity prices and they're coming. You're gonna see doubling and tripling of electricity prices. Uh, one of our local TV stations, the cost of gas reached record, low, record highs in Louisiana. In March, it's only gotten worse. The price per gallon varies by 10 cents or more across the capital, depending on the gas station. One of our HOMA newspaper, industry officials say jobs, economy, and tax revenue at state if Biden delays oil leases. The first president in modern history to not have lease sales. I had a conversation with the Secretary of Energy who came down to Louisiana recently, which I will tell you, I very much appreciate her coming to visit, and I appreciate her giving me time to talk. In my conversation with her, she says, I'm talking to her about leases, the fact that we need to offer up leases, new production areas. I don't know, how about in the United States versus Saudi Arabia, Iran, Venezuela, or other countries? You know what her response was? We don't need new sources of energy. Okay, let me ask you a question, Mr. Chairman. How is it that you don't need new sources of energy when our own president is going to Iran, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and others, and our own president is releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? It's supposed to be for disasters, not disastrous policies. <laughs> Help me understand how you don't need new supply whenever you're tapping foreign supplies and tapping our emergency reserves, putting us in a precarious or a dangerous situation. How can those two things coexist? Anybody? How can they coexist? This is, this is the stupidest energy policy I've ever seen in my life. And, and I don't care who you are. If you're, if you're a hardcore liberal, you're a hardcore conservative. This is affecting every American. It's undermining our economy. We have the resources right here in the United States. Why aren't we producing it? This is absolutely idiotic, these policies that we're moving forward on. There was a Treasury official under the Biden administration who was quoted as saying it was their objective to raise energy prices. Get the star there. It was their objective to raise energy prices. He, he said it. He said this is their intent, is to raise energy prices. It was their very objective. Let me tell you something. Boy, does that guy get a star. Congratulations. Congratulations. You achieved it. The highest energy prices that we've seen. The highest energy prices. Every single day, prices going up. I mean, who, who in the world are we representing? I thought we were sent here, and we raised our hands, and we took an oath to the, to the Constitution of the United States and the citizens that we represent. Let me tell you who's benefiting from what's going on right now. Iran, China, Russia, Venezuela, OPEC plus nations. Not us, we're paying for it. We're paying for it. And there was nobody, there was nobody who couldn't have looked at this and recognized exactly where this was going. And as I said, January 27th, last year, we posted this on Facebook. January 27th of last year, every single thing we've said was gonna happen, has happened. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna say this again. You failed the test of affordability, you failed the test of protecting the environment, and you failed the test on energy security. Have we not learned our lesson that by, by, by putting all of our eggs in the basket of people like Vladimir Putin, what a disaster that can be? Yet under this administration, when our Secretary of Interior sat right there and I asked her how much oil we bring in from Russia, she said, I have no idea. When we went through and explained that we had nearly tripled our importation or our dependence on Russian oil under that administration, under the Biden administration, she apparently had no clue and not understanding that by stopping domestic energy production, you have no impact on demand. All you do is cause prices to go up. So vote for amendment number three. Yield back. Any further discussion in the amendment? Mr. Chairman. You'll recognize, sir. Thank you. And, and uh, Representative Graves, 
could I just uh, ask you to amplify on one issue you touched on, but I'd like a little bit more clarification, and I'll yield to you in a second. What is the environmental difference between energy produced in the United States versus a Russia or Venezuela or Nigeria or some of these other countries? Now yield to the member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lamborn. Uh, Mr. Lamborn, uh, the National Energy Technology Lab, which is uh, some of the premier scientists in regard to energy technology and energy production, uh, they have uh, done a, a, an extensive report, if I, re if I remember correctly, it was in October, September, October of 2019, where they found that Russian natural gas delivered to Europe, delivered, which as you know, I think Germany has over 60% dependence on Russian gas, has a 41% higher life cycle cost excuse me, higher life cycle emissions. 41% higher life cycle emissions than U.S. gas delivered, and I'm talking about natural gas, delivered to Europe. If you, if you look at Asia, the comparison is it's actually 47% higher life cycle emissions from, Asian, from, from Russian gas being delivered to Asia as compared to U.S. gas. Look, the Biden administration, Mr. Lambert, I know you know this, the Biden administration has said that under... The EIA projections under the Biden administration, developing countries are going to see a growth in demand for natural gas between 31 and I think it's 44 percent over the next 28 years. Developed, developing countries are going to see an increase in demand between 44, no, 51 and 88 percent. Between 51. So look, the Biden administration acknowledges we are going to have a surge in global demand for natural gas if we produce it cleanest and safest then my gosh, why aren't we producing it here and sending it other places, which reduces global emissions? Yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Uh, 